Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about getting your favorite type of client, your ideal client, the client that you most want to work with. And there are a couple methods for this obviously, but I want to concentrate on some things that should be coming second nature to you and that you should have going on in the background all the time. First of all, you should be identifying who you want to work with. You should identify your ideal client. Now this can change over time. It certainly did for me, but at any point in time, you should identify who you, you would love to be working with. For example, maybe you want to work with authors and you want to be translating books. Or maybe you want to work with the UN or the WHO. Or maybe you want to work with a local organization. You want to work with a local bank or some law firms or a store or an organization, whatever it might be along those lines. Come up with three, four, maybe five of your ideal clients of companies, of organizations, or of people that you would like to work with. And so, for example, let's say it's a local bank, it's the UN, and it's uh, some company. So what do you do? First of all, you go to their websites and you see if they're hiring or if they're looking for anybody, if they need the services that you offer, let's say. You should be doing this with some regularity, by the way, at least once a month, I would say. And so either put in your calendar or sometimes if these websites have job alerts, you can sign up for those. So anytime a job that matches your description is available or, or comes up, you'll get something in your inbox. So this should be first and foremost, and you should constantly have something like this going on just so you can constantly have your ideal clients in your, uh, in your view. But the second thing you should do uh, that I recommend is uh, to set up Google alerts. Uh, there are other type of alerts, but I'll talk about Google alerts because those are the most common. You can set up Google alerts by going to alerts.google.com and just typing out whatever the name of the organization is. Now this could be obviously United Nations, it could be bank so-and-so in your area, or if you want to work with say entrepreneurs in your area, you can find entrepreneurial organizations in your area. This can be incubators or venture capitalists or just meetups and groups or whatever that deal with entrepreneurs. So what you do is uh, you type out this, the name of whatever company or organization or person or whatever it might be into Google Alerts. And what Google Alerts then does is it sends you an email, an alert, every time that they show up, usually in the news or for some other reason show up on Google search engine, right? And this is great because this means that anytime the organization or company goes through a change or ends up in the news for some reason or has anything new published that shows up on Google, um, you'll get an alert and so you'll get to see. And this allows you to start a conversation with this company. Meaning, even if this company is not hiring at the moment, even if this company isn't looking for translators or for whatever service you provide, you can still make yourself known to them and you can communicate with them. Let's give an example. Say your local bank decided to uh, open another branch in the south side of your town. And so this made the local news and it shows up on your Google News Alert. Local bank is opening south side branch. What you can do is just send them a note to whatever contact your local bank has or whoever's in charge of this new branch or whatever names they give out there. You can just shoot them an email and say, hey, just wanted to say congratulations on opening your new branch. By the way, if you're in need of any translators, since you're opening this new branch and you might have new customers there, uh, feel free to let me know. I've always wanted to work with your bank. I think I'm very qualified because of this, this and that. And this gives you a chance to make yourself known, even if they aren't actively looking for your services, then, but you can still make yourself known so they keep you in the back of their mind. What I would do quite personally is even if there aren't any opportunities, even if the reason they're in their news has nothing to do with expansion or with the fact that they might need someone who offers your services, just to shoot them an email anyway, just to say congratulations and just say, you know, I've been following your bank, I'm a big fan, I've been following your company, your organization, and it's something that I aspire to do in a few years or down the line, but I just want to say congratulations on uh, doing this and I wish you all the best. This just starts a conversation and it just starts something going on and it keeps you in back of mind for them. And uh, so just set up a Google alert for all the companies, your ideal companies, the companies that you're interested in. And at least you can keep track of what's going on with them so you can keep up to date because you definitely don't want opportunities to be slipping you by. And this is the best way to just keep up with what's going on. I would take every opportunity you can to also get in touch with them to try to start this conversation. And it can be even on Twitter, on Facebook or whatever, you know, just say, hey, congratulations, I saw about the move or, you know, just a short message like that if you don't want to send an email. 
but find some way to just start this conversation going and because you never know where where it'll go and it's always better than not starting a conversation it's always better than not keeping track of them so doing something is always better than nothing so that's just an easy way to use google alerts to help you out in your business and to help you get your ideal client um, in addition obviously to applying for jobs specifically on their website or wherever they might be uh, offering jobs and so I hope you find this helpful and I hope you're able to use it and, uh, and I hope you go through this thought process of thinking up your ideal client because it also gives you a direction to shoot for and subliminally, subconsciously, you'll know and consciously, obviously, you'll know which direction you should be headed with your translations if you know, okay, one day I want to be working with this type of organization or with this type of company. So anyway, I hope you find this helpful. Don't forget to click like and thumbs up and to subscribe if you want more videos dealing with freelancing with tips and tricks, hacks, tidbits, stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.